My name is Jay Van Smith. I'm the executive producer of the Right Now TV show. Today we are honored to have Mr. Aaron Brock from the Missoula Food Bank uh, on the show. Welcome, uh, welcome to the show, Mr. Brock. Thanks for having me, Mr. Smith. Nice to see you, sir. Oh, uh, I'm glad to have you back. Yeah. So Mr. Brock has been on our sh on our show on uh, on a rare occasion in uh, 2015, and we're honored, delighted to have him appear on the Right Now I Am I Right Now TV show for our 2016 series. Uh, Mr. Mr. Brock, would you tell us a little bit about what's going on at the food bank? Uh, yeah, how it got started. Uh, but for those who are, are for our viewing audience, this will just. Sure. Who are not quite familiar with the food bank? Sure, sure. Uh, I don't know how far back you want me to go. With the yeah, um, <laughs> you may want to start out with how when it got started, and yeah, then fast sure. forward to what's going on and how they can come about. Well, Missoula you know. Food Bank was founded about 35 years ago. It started as a volunteer effort here in Missoula that literally operated out of the trunks of some volunteer cars. People thought, my gosh, I know some folks who are hungry, who don't have enough to eat. What can we do to help them? And so it was this very grassroots effort. And then it moved into a couple of buildings. And uh, right now we are on South 3rd Street. We've been in our current facility for about 25 years. We are set up like a small free grocery store. And that's the primary way that we provide food to families here in Missoula. We operate a bunch of ancillary programs that you and I should probably talk about here in a little while. What's exciting for us today, though, is that We've known for a long time that we've outgrown our current space. We do not have the physical space to serve the population in Missoula that needs Missoula Food Bank, unfortunately. Yes. So we are in the process of moving, and uh, we're starting construction um, in late May on the future home for Missoula Food Bank, and we plan to be in it in late spring of 2017. And that's very exciting for us as we Super. look at, at a future Super. home. Yes, sir. Excellent. Well, that sounds like it sounds incredible. Really and you all are well deserving of that. Uh, how big would a new facility be, sir? Yeah, so the new facility will be uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 23, 24,000 square feet. That's, that's big. The current space that we're in, um, our current service space is only about 6,500 square feet. But before you or your listening audience, your viewing audience thinks we're quadrupling in size, that's not the case. We have our service space, we lease a building next door to that for meeting rooms, office space, and then we lease two warehouse units out west of Missoula that serve as our warehouse. So we're not really expanding in a tremendous way. What we're doing is we're bringing all of those components under one roof, and still in that we're having some room for growth. Uh, so That's what it's all about. Yeah, additional uh, efficiency and, and opportunity. Fabulous. Um, and and uh, search, uh, with, with, and for those who have, may have need of, well, need of provisions, sure, sure, how do sure. they go about in uh, receiving provisions from the Missoula Aging Services? And where are you all located currently? Yeah, so so you mentioned Missoula Aging Services. I'm, oh, I'm no forgive worries. me, sir. I'll, 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 I, I stand to be corrected. They're a strong partner. They do Meals on Wheels. So, yes. so they're also helping feed the hungry here in our community, and we see them as a really key partner. To use Missoula Food Bank, which I think is really what you were asking. Definitely. Is, uh, Aaron so, Brock, the executive director <laughs> of the Missoula Food Bank. Yeah. Uh, Welcome to our show. Good to be here. Thank you. When people come to Missoula Food Bank, they walk through our doors, they fill out a short intake survey. We're asking on that survey, we're asking who's in the household, the ages of the folks in the household. We're asking if there's an income, is there someone working, what the living situation is, what other services they're getting. Are they getting SNAP, which is now food stamps, of course. Are they getting WIC, are they getting child and health insurance program, all sorts of programs like that that we're asking about. Here's what I wanna, um, here's what I'm most proud of, and I'm proud of a lot of stuff that our food bank does. But our board has been really intentional to say it's not an application to see about getting service. It's a survey that lets us paint an accurate picture of what food insecurity looks like. What that means is that there's no criteria. If Warren Buffett walks through our doors today, <laughs> Mr. It. Buffett can get some food. That and is I, I completely mean it. And, and so our board has decided that the best judge of whether or not someone needs to use Missoula Food Bank is that person. And what that creates is this culture of dignity and trust and yes. love for our neighbors um, that I'm really proud of. That is super, sir. 
and I understand that your format. Well, the 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 the, the structured uh, under 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 on the order of a supermarket. Right. Right. Could you explain how that came, concept came about? Yeah. So. Um, in the food banking world, what we operate is what's called the client choice model. And so, and so that means that um, we have a bunch of different items on the shelves, just like, like I say, a small version of a free supermarket. And when a family comes in, they fill out that form, they sit down with a volunteer interviewer. The purpose of that interview is to make sure someone is welcome at the food bank, they feel welcome, they understand how the food bank works, and also to say, um, are there other resources that might be available to you here in our community that might be helpful for you? So it's, it's a place to say, um, what besides food can we help with today? And then in that visit, you're going to get a little shopping list that's based on your family size. So a family of six is going to take more food than a single individual will. And so the things that are on that card are basic staples. Dry cereal, oatmeal, pasta, dry rice, canned fruits and veggies, canned beans, uh, uh, tomato sauce, stuff like that. The client choice model means that someone actually takes that card, takes a shopping cart, and they go through and maybe we have five or six different kinds of soup on our shelves. Pick the ones that you want. That Fresh produce. Will eat. Exactly. Well, so, so that's, that's sort of the second phase then. Everything on the card is the basic non-perishable staple stuff. In addition, and we, we buy the majority of that. We buy about 90% of our non-perishable food items. We do that with dollars that our community donates to Missoula Food Bank. There are food drives that happen, um, but, but the vast majority is food that we're purchasing. We're purchasing a pallet of peanut butter at a time. Um, all the time. Right. And, and, we're, and, and what that means is that we always have peanut butter on our shelves, so even when there's not a food drive. Every single morning, our team is out in trucks and they're picking up at a whole bunch of local uh, grocery stores and they're grabbing yesterday's bread, yesterday's milk, yesterday's produce, frozen meat products, things that are still high quality, yes. that are good for folks to eat, but that are no longer going to be sold by that grocery store. And so that makes up the second piece of what you're talking about. We do have produce every day. We do have milk every day. We do have eggs and butter and all those things. But the amount that we have or the variety changes wildly right. day to day. So we set up, I mean, it's pretty much written on dry erase boards how much of certain items people can take. Some days we're going to have huge amounts of yogurt, for example. And yes. Each family can take... I don't know, a gallon or <laughs> whatever, a whole bunch of yogurt. And other days won't have any. And our goal is to look at what we have every single day right. and set limits so that two things happen. The first thing is let's find a happy home for all of this food. Let's send it home with everybody. Let's, let's not – we don't want to have any left. We're not trying to keep yogurt for tomorrow. We'll get whatever there tomorrow. Correct. And let's set the limits in such a way that the last family through our facility has a meaningful – has a meaningful selection to choose from and isn't looking at a produce cooler with some wilted lettuce and a black banana. I mean, let's, let's set limits so that, so that it really is equitably spread among all the families that are going to use us in a certain day. And so we're adjusting that on the fly all the time. And to those of you who are just tuning in, uh, you are watching the IMI Right Now television show. We're at 500 North Higgins here in Missoula, Montana at the MCAT uh, uh, Cablecast Network. Uh, today we are honored to have the distinguished, well, as our distinguished guest, Mr. Mr. Aaron Brock, the executive direct producer, the executive director. I like executive of the, producer though. <laughs> the executive director of the, of the Missoula Food Bank. Uh, Mr., Mr., Mr. Brock, uh, would you give us the address, the location, how we can get your, your, your frequency of uh, our schedule and yeah. so forth to so, your viewing audience? Sure. Missoula Food Bank is open Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And then again on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday evenings between 5 and 7 p.m. And we are located at 219, that's 219 South 3rd Street West, 59801. For folks who are in Missoula, and we serve primarily a Missoula population, um, we are right across the street from uh, Bernice's Bakery. That's, that's a pretty common landmark for people. Your current there. locality, Our right? current sir. locale. We're, we're, and we'll be there for another year, uh, give or take. Hopefully 11 months. Okay. Knock on wood. Gotcha. Yeah. 
And if, to, again, to those of you who just, uh, who just tuned into the broadcast, this handsome young gentleman sitting next to me is, sir, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself. I'm Aaron Brock. I'm the director for Missoula Food Bank. And where are you located? 219 South 3rd Street West. And what are your hours? <laughs> <laughs> Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And then Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday evenings from 5 to 7 p.m. Those are our hours of distribution, by which I mean those are the hours that people can come in and, and get food from us. We have staff there a lot more than that. We are open to receive donations. We're there setting up our store, uh, you know, cleaning after hours, all, all those sorts of things. So people can come in really starting at 8 a.m. Monday through Friday. Excellent. Uh, but we just don't open for actual service until 10. Do you embrace or enlisted the support of volunteers to your organization, sir? Boy, do we ever. Uh, so I am one of 10 people on our staff. And um, in 2015, more than 1,500 volunteers helped out at the food bank, contributing almost 30,000 hours of service. So there's really, so it's pretty awesome. That's incredible. We cannot do, it doesn't happen without, without an, an army of volunteers. And really, you know, there's a sliding scale, but there's really two, two camps that our volunteers fall into. And we need both, both. On the one hand, we have, you know, here's a corporate group, or here's, here's a, a church group that has, maybe it's five, maybe it's 50 people that come in and for an hour or for five hours or whatever it is, they help us do one project. They help us build a bunch of backpacks for a kid's program, they help us sort through a bunch of food from a canned food drive, you name it, there's a project, and, and, then, and then they leave, and they go back, and maybe we see them the next year. There's also, um, there's volunteers who are, who are regular at the food bank. So today is a Friday, which means this morning, Michael and Ron were stocking the shelves. Michael's been at the food bank for 22 years, every Friday morning. That's wonderful. Ron's come, I think, for about mm, 10, 12 years, every Friday. They're there every Friday morning, which means that if I were to go over there next Friday and start putting cans of tuna fish or peanut butter on the shelves, Michael would come tell me to stop doing his job. He would come, he'd be nice about it, but he would tell me to get out of his way. Bless his heart. He has ownership in that, and it's profound, and there are so many. Based so on tenure. <laughs> based on tenure, based on interest. I mean, this is. Um, he's been there. He's been there, and he's yeah. he's not wrong. He, and he's he, committed. I mean, and, and he does it better than I do at this point. Well, there's no question important. about that. And, and so there's so many volunteers like that where you, we commend you, Mike. <laughs> keep up the good work. Yeah, and we know that every Thursday we know who we're going to see. We know every we, we know, and it's it's pretty incredible. And there's a. Uh, there's always need for more volunteers. We always have, have, have jobs that we need folks to help with, always. There's always a need, and yet we have this incredible community of folks that is so dedicated to making sure that our neighbors have the food that they need. So, super, citywide, uh, countywide for that, for that instance. In fact, uh, 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 according to Mr. Brock, they don't, if, if Warren Buffett, if Warren Buffett <laughs> was to come in, he wouldn't be denied provisions at the at the Missoula Food Bank and we commend you for that sir. Uh, sir, how are you all how are you funded at the Missoula Food Bank? Yeah, our funding is is entirely charitable. We do not have any earned income revenue streams in any of our programs. The vast majority of our funding is local private gifts. And we are not a successful organization because of just a couple of folks or foundations that give huge amounts. We're a successful organization because of this incredibly wide swath of our community that contributes at the level that makes sense for them. And so in some cases that might be $10, and in some cases that's a couple thousand dollars. But we have uh, I think last year more than 7,000 people contributed at least something to Missoula Food Bank. And so, you know, Wonderful. Our, uh, Wonderful. our annual cash budget is a little more than $1 million. That's what we spend each year in cash. That does not include the value of the donated food that we're receiving. And, and so that's uh, it's a lot of, I got to tell you, we open up, I get checks in the mail every single day, and I'll open up a check and it'll be, It'll be written in the handwriting of an octogenarian, someone who 
who is old and careful with their handwriting. You can see that in their handwriting. Here's a check made out to the food bank for $3. Wow. And you go and you That's look in our much. database and you realize that here's this person who's been given $3 to the food bank every month for 10 years. And, and there's so many people like that. It's pretty incredible, pretty humbling. Well, that is amazing. And we, and we you know, and, and we, we encourage all Missoulians to, to dig into your, you, you reach it, look into, you reach it into your heart. And 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 reaching, I mean, to look into your hearts and reach into your purses or your pocketbooks or your billfolds and support the Missoula Food Drive. I mean, the Missoula Food Bank. Uh, there are they are always constantly in need of uh, financial uh, resources as well as uh, other with food, the perishable. Not sure. do you do food drive? Do you accept perishables? Yeah. From so, um, just uh, your from your from from the from the public. Yeah. So um, non-perishable goods always. Well, well not well. Yeah, yeah. perishable, but, but non -perishable, non-perishable. Right. You know, if you could speak in your in your language, <laughs> talk food. So, <laughs> right. So uh, so non-perishable goods. These are shelf stable items. Like like again, I think about a peanut butter, you know, canned goods, dry goods. There are a lot of food drives where we get we get those items, and that's wonderful. And really focus on that. As far as perishable goods goes, most of that that is donated comes through the grocery stores, that grocery rescue program. But we also, you know, I say this with love. There's the season of zucchini at Missoula Food Bank, where you have all these people here in the Garden City who are growing zucchini, and then you realize this was fun to grow. What am I going to do with 15 giant zucchinis? Right. Maybe I'll hold on to one or two of them and bring the rest down. So, and that's that's awesome. And i got to tell you, we'll find a happy home for every single one of those zucchinis. And so during the growing season, we get a lot of local produce that's donated. Our, that's our marvelous. produce cooler looks awesome. Yeah. Well, we do have the, the, the farm bank here. I mean, the, the, um, they have the, on the weekends, they have the... Uh, farmer's market. Yeah. Farmer's market. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, do they contribute any? Or do you, yeah, I, is so that something that's, that's doable or absolutely It is doable, doable. and we pick, up, uh, we pick up on Saturdays from some of those vendors the, the produce that they haven't sold. Yeah, sure. Um, and so, yeah, that's definitely something that, that we're a part of. And, and I think we're probably not as consistent with that as we could be, but, but we've had a good history of working with the farmer's market. And Mr. Brock, what is the shelf life of the, the food as a rule that's dispensed, dispensed amongst, I mean, at the food bank? Well, you know, it certainly well, depends on what the food is. So okay. um, there are, we work very closely with our local health department. They're very supportive. They're a resource for us that we work with right. all the time. And, right. and, and the guideline is when in doubt, throw it out. Right. You know, if I've got two kids at home, my kids are... I got two little girls. They're six and four. That's if I wouldn't feel amazing. good about feeding something on our shelves to one of my kids, right? I, we're not putting it out there. And I think everyone has that same ethic. So, so what that means is we're not afraid to throw away food that looks like it might be a little iffy. Let's not let's not put people in the situation of having to deal with with food that's not good for them to eat. Compromise. Um, exactly right. Yes. So you know, um, the the health the health department guidelines are that canned. A canned food items, if the can is in good shape, not dented, not scratched, not anything, if the can is in, is in good shape, the food inside is not just safe, but of high quality for yes. two years past the expiration date. Okay. Uh, and then dry goods, the, it's about one year past. Um, and then for, you know, for milk, it's about, um, it's about one week past the sell-by date. That's the guideline that we use. Okay. Yogurt is, I think, three weeks. So there's, there's guidelines that we use for all of this stuff. And again, our priority is certainly safety first, but, then, but above that, it's quality. Not just safe to eat, but is it something that I'd feel good feeding to my kids, feeding to my friends? And if the answer is no, we're not going to deal with it. We Thank also you. understand that you serve uh, meats and, and, oh, and, yeah. and poultry. Um. Yeah, yeah, again, it's a, it's, a, it's a super, it's more like, the, you, as I just indicated in our previous broadcast at, yeah. back in 2015, uh, how, how, uh, how you have observed uh, your, your um, uh, constituents come in the door with their heads down low and yeah, right. they kind of feel, you know, um, um, humiliated by having to go through a food bank source. But sure, people who come to the food bank have to overcome, we see this the all the time, these barriers of guilt and shame. You know, in 2015, 
18,414, that's almost 18,500 separate individuals walked through the doors at least one time at Missoula Food Bank. That is one out of every six people who live here in this community. And that when, is amazing. When you break, it's amazing, and and it's also um, I want to be humbling, clear. Humbling. What's good is that we had the food, and that we had the resources to yes. provide groceries to every single one of those people and those families. But I also think we look at the work that happens at Missoula Food Bank, and we, unfortunately, we're a growth industry, and I really wish we weren't. It's not a. We are not. Um, we're not trying to sell more tennis shoes today than we were yesterday. We are, I wish our numbers were going down. And so, and so it's, with, it's with that understanding that I share these numbers and these trends that, you know, I, I'm, I'm not proud of the fact that so many of our neighbors are living in the margins and are living paycheck to paycheck and, or, you know, or don't make enough money in a, you know, there are so many folks that we see who are, who are employed, but who are the working poor. And, um, and it's, it's unfortunate that there's so many of our neighbors that one out of every six people who live here in Missoula is in a food insecure household. That's, that's terrible. Um, Which is why it's so significant it's and, a, and important that we do have you Missoula food It's important bank. that we exist. There's yes. no question about that. When you break down that 18,500 number, 40% uh, of the folks that we saw last year came a grand total of one time, and 65% came three times or fewer. So what that, what that paints for us is this picture of, of a household that is low income, that's on a tight budget, but that is making it most of the time. They have employment, they have transportation, they have housing, their kids are in school. They look just like you and me, and then and then something happens. There's some event that takes place. There's a temporary job loss. There's an injury. There's an illness. The car breaks down. Whatever it is, this tight budget breaks. They come through our doors so that as they are digging themselves out of that hole, their kids have breakfast before school, or they have food over the weekend, or whatever that looks like. They come to get some groceries from us. And then what we see more often than not is they come one or two or three times, and then they do get their feet back under them. And and we don't see them again, maybe for another year or maybe ever. You know, there is definitely a population that relies on the food bank in a more ongoing way. So you think about our elder neighbors. If you're 80 and you're on a fixed income and it's not enough to live in Missoula, visiting the food bank once or twice a month might be part of how you survive. But that is the minority of the folks that we're serving. Well, sir, I'm, you know, again, we, we applaud your efforts and we commend you. And, and you, do, you, do you embrace uh, part, community partnering initiatives to, uh, to, to support what you do at the food bank? Um, and, and uh, yeah, uh, do you, do you, yeah. do you em, em, embrace uh, your partnering, partnering on, uh, with other organizations from time to time? <laughs> All the time. We are, a, we are an enthusiastic partner. Right. When someone wants to work with us, we want to work with them right back. We, we don't pretend that, uh, that we can do the work that we're doing alone, that we, that we see our, our mission is a big mission. Amen. It's not just to provide groceries to folks. Our mission is to end hunger here in Missoula. And we're not doing that alone. We're a band-aid. We understand that. We understand that when a family walks through our doors, they need the service we provide. But the issues of poverty and food insecurity and marginalization and underemployment and expensive housing and you name it, the list goes on and on and on, that caused them to be in that situation, they exist just the same as that family walks out of our facility. We didn't really change their situation. We got them some groceries so they can get through and they're not going hungry as they try to, as they try to cope with that situation. So we need, we need to have a strong network of partners that work with us in a systemic way so that we can, we can collaboratively address issues. I mean, 52% of the people that visited the food bank last year indicated that high housing cost was the primary reason for them to come through our doors. We know that housing is expensive here in Missoula, and wages have not kept up yes. with how high, with the cost of the supply cost, and demand. Yeah, exactly. Well, cost yeah, of living, rather. The cost of living, that's yes. exactly right. Yes. Wages have not kept up. And so, and so that's contributing to a huge number of our neighbors being in food insecure households where once in a while there is more month than money. 
So, so let's talk about that honestly, and we need to bring housing coalition partners to the table. We need to bring city government uh, to the table. We need to, we need to, we need to help be a voice in a coalition of people that are all working for the same thing, and that is that is to create a better place for all of our neighbors, not just those of us who can afford a certain lifestyle. I concur. And again, Ms. you know, and thank you for that, sir. Uh, Mr. 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 The day, uh, well, well, we today we're honored to have our, our guest, the guest as our distinguished guest at the IMI Right Now TV uh, show, Mr. Aaron Brock, the executive director of the Missoula Food Bank. And uh, uh, Mr. Brock is being rather modest. I, I would like to add that he is a very significant force on the on the battle of hung, of, of, of of conquering hunger. Not only in the in the city of Missoula, but in the county and in, in the county and representing in, um, on the battlefield for hunger, addressing hunger in the, in, in, in the USA. So we do commend and, and, and support and applaud your efforts there uh, at, at the Missoula Food Bank. Sir, do you have any initiatives planned or going forward that you might, uh, might would like to publicize or announce to our viewing constituency? about benefits or fundraisers that you have planned in the near future? You know, the thing that we've got going on right now, our primary focus is, is on our new home, on the future home for Missoula Food Bank. Uh, all in all, Talk about it. Yeah, you bet. Um, construction will start here at the end of May. Uh, and Great. like I said, about a, we're anticipating about an 11-month construction schedule. And, and we are still fundraising. We do not have all of the fundraising in place, but we're very close. Uh, on a six million dollar project, okay. which is a lot, yes. we either have secured or are in the process there um, of, of securing about five and a half million. What that leaves is about five and a half million that we either have or that we can we can confidently put our finger on and say we know this is coming. We can rely on. Gotcha. Uh, what that leaves is about a five hundred thousand dollar gap, and on a project of this scope, there are places where you say, well, that's only 8% of the total. Go, oh, that's pretty small. And then you go, it's half a million dollars. All of that is to say, we are asking all of our friends and neighbors to contribute, to help make this a reality. Push us right. that last little bit, push us over the hump. Yes. Maybe that's $10, maybe that's $10,000. Right. Whatever that looks like, but, but we, need, we need help to make sure that this thing really happens and happens in the right way. Are you a nonprofit organization? You sir? bet we are. We're a 501c3, which means donations are fully tax deductible. Super, super. And again, my name is Jay Van Smith. We'd like to welcome you all to the broadcast. You're watching the IMI Right Now TV show. Uh, we're a digital satellite broadcast network. Uh, we are in, uh, 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 empowering uh, women. Seniors, the the, the, the the mental and physically challenged community, those with special needs, veterans of all of veterans, all active duty and armed forces and uniformed personnel. I am I uh, right now. TV is a, a subsidiary of the IMI uh, tele, uh, IMI uh, Tri-State Alliance uh, Satellite Communications Network. We're also advocacy, intervention, referral, employment, job placement, fair housing, and supportive services. Um, we again are honored and delighted to have Mr. Aaron Brock from the Missoula Agent Services. Missoula Food Bank. Please forgive me, sir. <laughs> Please forgive me. I do. And no again, worries. to my viewing audience. Uh, um, Mr. Aaron Brock is the executive, the executive director of the Missoula Food Bank, and we are honored to have him on our show here at uh, Right Now TV. Um, we have a yeah. yeah uh, speaking of uh, the, the, the 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 scale of scope of what the mag of what we of our operations and how they correlate correlate. We're also in the, we're a new startup, mm -hmm. and we're in the process of developing a, um, well, creating a labor-intensive um, housing development complex yeah. here in the state of Montana. We're up. And, and we're justifiably proud of. We're still looking for space and, and, okay. and a suitable location sure. to, for this investment. 
Uh, but our format primarily consists of, and, uh, and not in this, just in the limited sense of the word, but we are a corporate, well, a, a corporate economic development, community services, community affairs, uh, new technology, employment opportunities, and new business development. And again, uh, we will be publishing uh, publications geared toward our youth, our American, uh, well, our, our challenged, physically uh, challenged community, seniors, veterans, and advocacy. We're developing a IOGA, uh, Industry Organized Government Approved Satellite Communications Network. And at IMI, Tri-State Alliance, we give new value priority and meaning to being made in the USA. And again, we'd like to ask you all to, for, to, be, to, to, to be compassionate and, and be generous in supporting the Missoula Food Bank. Um, again, uh, we are delighted to have Aaron Brock on our show. He's the, the, one of the hardest working men in food. And uh, we'd like for him to kind of give us a, 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 a summarize uh, yeah, uh, to those who just tuned in to the, to the broadcast, what, what, where are you going? And I mean, what, what, where are you? How are you, where are you located? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and how might a person donate or contribute? And where should they send these proceeds? And oh. yeah, when are, you, when are your hours of operation? Mr. Aaron Brock, the Executive Director of the Missoula Food Bank. Oh, thank you, sir. Um, Missoula Food Bank is located at 219, that's 219 South 3rd Street West. That's our mailing address, 59801 is the zip code. And so that's a great place to send uh, donations. We, we are there 8 a.m. Monday through Friday. On Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursday evenings, we are in our facility until 7 p.m. And on Wednesdays and Fridays, we, our staff runs like rats from a sinking ship, and so uh, out of there by maybe 3 p.m. on those two days, if, if we can sneak away, if, if, if there's not anything on fire that we need to put out. Um, we're open for distribution for people to come and get food from the food bank Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., and then Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday evenings between 5 and 7 p.m. as well. The thing that we haven't talked about yet, and I wonder if, if you'll let me. Please, is sir. And again, we want to thank you all for tuning in to our broadcast. We want to thank Mr. Neil Wells, uh, the production assistant from MCAT. We want to thank Mr. Christian Ack Ackerman. And we want to thank the wonderful team over here at, at, at MCAT. We also would like to acknowledge Steve O'Brien, the author of the epic theme number two. Again, thank you for watching. Um, you know, some of the ancillary programs that, that we run. So we, we have the small free grocery store, but there's a couple of other ways that we try to reach out to especially vulnerable populations here in Missoula. So I'll just touch on those. If Please, that's all right. if you will. Sure. So 
Our Roots program is a once a month, it's a delivery to homebound seniors. Right now there are about 420 seniors that are getting a package, with a bag and a box of groceries delivered right into their kitchens by a volunteer every single month. And will you repeat the name of that again? To the we, we call it ROOTS, which stands for Recognizing Other Opportunities to Serve. It's a CSFP program. What do you uh, mean by it? You, 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 you CSFP it means it's a USDA program. This is a federal government program that is designed to serve people who specifically are low income, who are elderly, and who have transportation barriers, and so they cannot come to the food bank. We have room on this program, so if any of your viewing audience here in Missoula needs to have a delivery once a month of some basic staple foods, please give us a call, 549-0543, and, and we'll chat about whether or not we can get you on our Roots program. Wonderful. Um, I'll Wonderful. also touch on some of the kids' programming that we do. Yes. We, uh, we know that a lot of 20% of school-age children here in Missoula County are growing up in households at or below the poverty line. These are, these are kids in low-income households. And so we've developed some programs that very specifically try to address childhood hunger. And we've got some really excellent partnerships, primarily through the schools, but with a number of others as well. So our kids' table program picks up in the summer where school lunch leaves off. The school district operates some summer lunch programs. What we do is we collaboratively sit down with them and we look at basically a map of Missoula and we look at the neighborhoods that are covered through their programs and then we say, where can we fit in? Where can we offer programs that fill gaps? Last year we had about 22 different sites that we were participating at. Most of these are, um, you think of programs that offer summer camp, kind of experiences that are accessible to kids from low-income households. Yes. So our job is just to go and make sure that the kids enrolled in those programs have access to a healthy lunch. But we also have opened up some open feeding All right, sites. Would these be bag lunches, hot lunches, or bag lunches? Mostly bag lunches, yeah. yeah. I mean, there, there's, some, there's some variety, but, but, but fairly simple. Nutrition, you know, right. a lot of peanut butter jelly, that sort of stuff. Super. Yep. Yeah. We also opened up a, uh, an open feeding site last summer at the public library, and we'll be expanding that into some other open feeding sites this coming summer. What that means is that any person, 18 or younger, can just come. They don't need, we don't collect their names. All we do is we just have food available, and they can come and get it, no questions asked. And so we'll be doing that at the library again this summer. We'll be doing that. We're opening up a site at Burn Street Bistro on the north side, the North Side Community Development Corporation. Yes, um, yes, yes. And MCDC. Um, and, 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 and still, I think, one site that we're, we're trying to figure out where it's exactly going to be. But, but the point is, let's make sure that every child here in Missoula has an opportunity to thrive. And part of that is not being hungry. Part of that is, is having enough food. The, the last piece of that, then I'll mention two more pieces. I'm lying. Two more pieces that no, I'll go mention. go right ahead, sure. Uh, an after-school snack program. We yes. partner again with the schools, but with programs like flagship, like boys and girls clubs, programs that are accessible to kids from low-income households who need after-school care. So again, our job is just to go in and make sure that the kids enrolled in those programs have access to a healthy and hearty after-school snack. My kindergartner, she's six. She is hungry when she gets home from school at 3 o'clock. Well, then, yeah. And, uh, they are, and, uh, let's make sure those kids, I think that's how they are. Those kids are hungry. Yes. And so let's, let's they're make growing. sure. They're growing. They're <laughs> growing. And they're, she runs everywhere she goes, just like yes. every other kindergartner in the world. And then, and then the last thing is our Kids Empower Pack program. And this is a program Super. that sends kids home on Friday afternoon with a pre-made little package of nutritious but also kid-friendly food. So it's got two breakfasts, two lunches, and two hearty snacks in this little pack. And the kids who get this program are identified by teachers or resource counselors, or some adult in the school as yes. being, these are the kids that are showing up on Monday morning not ready to learn because they're hungry, yes. because they didn't get enough to eat over the weekend. So oh, this that's... program is in response to that. The kids that are identified that's by this amazing, program. That's amazing, sir. Yeah. That's it's, amazing. It's a pretty, what my favorite part of this program, Mr. Smith, is that 
the teachers discreetly put this food in the kids' backpack without without anyone knowing right. on Friday afternoon. That so is that, incredible. That kindergartner, that fourth grader, whoever it is, right. just carries home a backpack that's a little tiny bit heavier than it was when they came to school that morning, wow. but they're not identified in front of their peers. Right now, there are 515 kids in Missoula County that are getting this package every Friday afternoon. And here's, here's the sad part. We are, not, we are not meeting the need. We know that there's about 730 kids that need it. There's about 200, a little more than 200 kids that are not getting this program every single week that we know, we know could benefit from it. <clears throat> and the reason is that um, we've capped out, we, we need more support to make it happen. It costs us about $4 to make every single one of those bags. There, this is not a federal program. There's no government reimbursement for anything like this that we're doing. So what that means is that we've got, we've got some fundraisers that we're planning. We're writing grants pretty aggressively. But until we find additional resources, we cannot grow this program without jeopardizing the sustainability of our whole organization. And or support from, from the, from right, the public. Absolutely. From the general public. So we've asked, you know, we've, we've done some campaigns where we've asked folks for gifts of $40. $40 provides 10 of these. And, and so we've had a lot of folks who've responded to that and who've given either 40 or, or in multiples of $40 for yes. this program. Yes. It's really tangible. 40 bucks, you know exactly you're getting 10 backpacks that go home that feed a kid for a weekend. That's 10 weekends of hunger-free play for a kid right here in our community. Whoa. So, and so that, there, there, you, there you have it. I mean, it's, a, it's very it's, Everyone has a, a responsibility to, to, to see and to raise and to supporting the growth and development of our, of our community and our youth and, um, and, and to address the, the war on hunger. Excuse me. We would like to commend the great work that is being done at the Missoula Food Bank under the auspices of Mr. Aaron Brock, the executive director of the Missoula Food Bank. Uh, Serge, I, I, you mentioned, I, uh, we, I recall hearing about a program that you're also involved in, I believe on Saturdays, where you broadcast. Uh, if you could expand on a little bit about that program, it speaks about uh, our Food for Thought series? Food for Thought, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. What is that all about? So this is a monthly discussion group that we have um, we've been trying to get some energy into. And uh, the, the whole concept is, is an acknowledgement of the scope of the problems around food insecurity, poverty, underemployment, health care, housing, you name it. The idea of this is to, is to bring partners together who are experts in those various fields that maybe don't directly impact hunger, but that certainly indirectly have, a, have an impact on the lives of our neighbors who rely on Missoula Food Bank. So the, so the purpose of Food for Thought is just to have a discussion group yes. with, that comes together. And we tend to do those, I think most recently we're doing them on the third Thursday of every month from 4 to 5 p.m. at Missoula Public Library. Uh, and it's just, it's open anyone can come listen participate that is the idea uh you know if you want to know i'm not sure how regular our dates really are so jumping on our website which is missoulafoodbank.org or following us on facebook we're just if you look for missoula food bank on facebook and you like us uh, that's the best way to actually keep tabs on not only when these are but what the discussion topic is it changes it changes every single month so one month will be focused on on electing representatives to government who who prioritize one way or another yes the issues of food insecurity or another month might be talking about health care and making sure it's more accessible to people from low-income households the point is there's a different agenda each and every time that we get together so if you follow us on Facebook, which is just at Missoula Food Bank, uh, you'll see what we're talking about. And if you're interested, please come, listen, add your voice to the conversation. The goal isn't to create an action plan out of these conversations. It's, people don't leave these meetings knowing that they're going to go do something necessarily. But rather, it's let's shine a light on it. Let's bring experts together who can add depth to these conversations. Let's talk about these issues in real ways. And let's, let's acknowledge that they exist. And then the hope is that from that, we can begin to piece together something that looks like a solution. 
Well, that is marvelous. Sir, and I would like to I also add, you can count us in or at I am yes. right now TV. Well, thank you. Uh, consider us as an extension of your television that was your arm and, and, and cable cast. Thank you. Uh, anytime, if there's anything that we can do to to get out the word or to, to, to yeah, to uh, and, and, and enlighten the general public, uh, to shed the light on what's what, on 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 what's going on uh, on your initiatives and, um, and 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 developments, we would be more than delighted to to do so. Awesome. Please feel free to keep us informed. Uh, we will all if if it was if it's also, also with your consent, we'd like to do uh, in addition to, the, to in addendum with this program, we'd like to pull up some footage from. I don't know if it would be appropriate, but. Uh, the PowerPoint we did last year when we yeah. did the mm -hmm. when we when you we when you were our guest um, on our uh, yeah on the initial broadcast uh, at uh, the, uh, the the right now TV show I we yeah it, it was kind of rather informative it was visual it kind of showed mm -hmm. what you, sure what you do there you know yep. I mean and we just might we would like to just kind of run that yeah. Uh, on the back end, if it would be if it would be acceptable, sir, that would be just fine. You know, I'm sure some of the statistics have changed a teeny tiny bit, but the story has not changed. So that I'm sure that PowerPoint is still is still relevant today. Great, go for Great. it. Great, because we'll we'll do that. We'll run, we'll run that for you. Uh, you do have our support. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah. With you, even though we're all wearing construction hats around this just this time, this during this uh, this time during this period. Uh, in the development of our, our various organizations, we are all uh, uh, we can all concur that we're working toward a, a common goal, and that is to meet the needs of those who are less fortunate and less privileged. Um, again, we you know even though we're we're in a different arena, you know we everybody has to eat, and so we we strongly urge you all to dig into your heart. I mean, look into your hearts and dig into your purses and your even that that little piggy bank you forgot about under the bed. You know, I'm sure there's a few coins that you could contribute to the Missoula Food Bank. Um, I mean, they're, you know, they're doing an extraordinary job there and work. There is the labor of love. Mm -hmm. We applaud with the, the, uh, the Mr. 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 Brock and his fine staff. They also do accept volunteers. So please, if you have some extra time, so to expound on that, what would be the best time days that you really could use some additional help we can find, you know, we if you have. And when are you? Yeah, you know, and the days that you're there, and the days that, well, yeah, yeah you're open. We're there, time. so we're open Monday through Friday. There's a lot of weekend stuff. Like tomorrow is the Stamp Out Hunger Postal Drive, so we've got a bunch of volunteers and me working on a Saturday, making didn't sure. Here, I mean, we didn't know about it. I mean, oh, sorry. How yeah. often does that work? Sir? That's once a month. Or, I'm sorry, that's once a year. That's once a year. The the it's the Stamp Out Hunger Postal Drive, and and there's a whole bunch of of drives like that that. Okay might take place over a weekend here and there so, so the point is that that there's no specific time where we say we always need volunteers at this precise time in, instead the inverse happens where volunteers come to us and they say here's my schedule but here's the time that I might have to give and then we say okay how does that work how can we how can we fit the time that that this volunteer has to give and the skill set this volunteer brings to the table how can we fit that in in a way that moves our mission forward Right. You know, and, and so I guess what I would say uh, to prospective volunteers, to prospective donors, to anybody in Missoula who is interested in our work, be that positive or negative. Uh, if you're interested and you think that uh, you'd like to know more about what we're doing, please come down and visit us. Come through the doors at 219 South uh, 3rd Street West. Ask for me. I'm Aaron Brock. Ask for any of our staff. We are always happy to take a few moments to talk with you, to give you a tour, to show you what our operation looks like, to show you the way that we carry out our mission, to show you how we're, how we're doing all the work that we do. And, and I, I say that because, um, because there's a lot of misperceptions. I remember when I first came to Missoula Food Bank way back in 2003, and I, I had this sense in my head of what food insecurity looked like and what hunger would look like here in my community. And what I pictured were two things. I pictured hunger looking like, okay, there's the visibly homeless guy. He's under the bridge. He's really dirty. He's got a dog and a cardboard sign. 
And I also pictured the little child on the cover of National Geographic, you know, with the flies on their face and the distended stomach and the little tiny stick arms. And that, that's what I thought hunger looked like. And, and both of those are real too, but I gotta tell you, I see people who look much more like you and me. And it, and it took me a long time. It took me a long time to get my head around that and to understand um, it, wasn't, it wasn't the visibly homeless. It, it, wasn't, it, it wasn't these stereotypes that we have. It was more and more the working poor. It was, it was families working hard, trying to make it, just not able to stretch a minimum wage job far enough to survive in Missoula. And, and, and I guess I think I can talk about that all day long, but for folks who are interested, please come down. Please tour. Please see it with your own eyes, uh, because I cannot do it justice. Amen. And again, we would like to thank Mr. Aaron Brock for being a guest on our broadcast. Uh, and, a, and, and we strongly here at IMI uh, Right Now TV urge you all to give, uh, to, to look into your hearts, and be and support the, the 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 great work that is being go, that is going forward. And it's been on going ongoing for for dec for, for for decades. You know, about thirty five years. At over at the Missoula Food Bank. Uh, and again, we want to commend and we, we're grateful to have the distinguished Mr. Aaron Brock, one of the hardest working men in the in the in the food world, to appear on our broadcast. And uh, we uh, we strongly urge and appeal to our to our viewing audience to support them. If it's no more than but if it's just fifty cents or a dollar, you know, uh, you, it, it'll work. Every little bit helps, uh, and we and we applaud the efforts that they're doing there. He just indicated that they have this with the different programs and initiatives. There's a an, a program going on this weekend. We really will. Uh, if we would have known more about it, <laughs> sir, we would have been out there on the, uh, on the stump. Uh, but yeah, please in the future keep us addressed, uh, of, 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 yeah, abreast of what's going on, right. so we yeah, can be on the, the out there, uh, uh, raising the levels of consciousness, and uh, and 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 in our part, and and being and supporting organizations such as the Missoula Food Bank, who is on the front line for addressing the war on on, on hunger and our great state of Montana, and in the city of Missoula. So again, if you have any concerns, or if you'd like to make a contribution, Mr. Brock, give them that address and that location again, sir, where they would send donations. Sure, our mailing address is 219 South 3rd Street West, Missoula, Montana, 59801. Our physical address is the same, 219 South 3rd Street West. We are just south of the Higgins Bridge on 3rd Street across from Bernice's Bakery. Before we adjourn this broadcast, sir, could you give, would you go, would you, would you just kind of give us a, 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 a review the new construction project yep. that is forthcoming uh, for the new Missoula Food Bank in Missoula, Montana, and where, it's, where it will be located, sure. and how they may continue to support that initiative. Yeah, our, uh, our current home no longer meets our, our needs. There are too many people who need Missoula Food Bank for us to serve them out of our cramped and small location on 3rd Street. We've known that for quite some time. We are starting construction here in about 10 days on what will be our future home, and that'll be on the corner of Catlin and Wyoming. I think the address is, let's see if I can get it right, 1720 Wyoming. Uh, it is about five blocks north of the Good Food Store, very close to Home Resource, very close to uh, the new Salvation Army facility. Uh, we are building a new home there, and, um, and Knock on wood, it should be about an 11-month construction project. We are still fundraising. We've raised or are in the process of raising most of the money, but we need additional help. We are um, close to half a million dollars away from our goal as of today, and that's a lot. And so we are asking, we are asking all of our friends and neighbors to, con uh, to consider making a gift that makes that a reality. Well. And what would be the name? Do you have? Is there? Is what is? Is there? Will the name be remain to be the same? 
Uh, well, until we or change it, yeah. I, you know, to we, uh, someone in particular. No, um, there are some spaces within the building that will be named. The very first gift in our campaign came from the Gallagher, well, the Gallagher Western Montana Charitable Foundation. Uh, the Gallagher family has been a longtime supporter of Missoula Food Bank, and so there's a there's a meeting room space and a learning kitchen space, a space where we'll do education around cooking skills nutrition, things like that. So that space will be named after the Gallagher Foundation and the Gallagher family. Wonderful. Um, there's Wonderful. a couple, and there's a couple other, other, other spaces that, um, where we're, we're working with donors about how to recognize them in, in the right way. But, um, but the entire facility will remain just Missoula Food Bank. Wonderful. Well, sir, we just, we, we're hopeful that, that this will not be your last appearance on our broadcast. We'd like for you to keep us abreast of what's going on. I'm willing to and, come back. And, and, and we would be honored to have you. And we'd like to also, yeah, maybe the next time we'll have an opportunity to appear on the, uh, with our hard hats on the construction site. Yeah. Uh, on live on location of the new, uh, for, so the new, for, the new uh, for, for the new Missoula Food Bank uh, here in Missoula, Montana. And again, we just want to thank Mr. Aaron Brock for appearing on our broadcast. And we ask you all, we strongly urge our viewing audience to, to support the work that is being done there. Uh, for they are truly right there, truly meeting a the challenge. They have, they have stepped up to the plate, and they're meeting a the challenge of feeding our, of, of addressing the, the and, and, they're, and, and, and they're defeating, they're winning in the war on, on, on hunger. But the battle isn't over with. And we ask, so we ask you, we urge you all to, to if, if, you, if you don't have the, the financial for with all, can roll up your sleeves and donate some time. But get involved with the Missoula Food, Food Bank. And again, we want to thank Mr. Aaron Brock, the executive director of the Missoula Food Bank, for appearing on broadcast. Sure, we're going to leave you with the final thought, uh, if you will, to our viewing audience and those who may have need. Uh, Rather, they have yeah. bellies that are full or right. bellies that are growling. You know, someone who walks through our doors to get food, what we see over and over again is, is the obstacles that they had to overcome to walk through our doors in the first place. We see people who come through who are ashamed to be there, who are used to making it, and then something has, something's happened, some event has happened in their life, and now they're thinking, oh, no, how am I even going to feed my kids? And I can imagine how that would feel as a father for my two kids. And I watch, I watch fathers and I watch mothers walk through our doors carrying that weight in this incredibly physical way. And this magical thing happens, and it happens, I hope it's universally, it feels like it happens universally at the food bank, where every single person who comes through is greeted in a way that says, if you're choosing to come to the food bank instead of going hungry or letting your kids go hungry, that is the right choice. We, are here for you, that is, that is why the food bank exists, and there is enough. There is enough food for you to get some and for the next person behind you to get some also. You're not taking it away from somebody that you perceive to be more needy. And I guess I share that all to say, this cool thing happens where I watch people who leave the food bank and they got some food, and that's this powerful and important thing, and this other thing happened too, where they leave and their heads are held higher than they were when they came in. And so I would just say that our goal is not just to provide food, it's to do it in a way that personifies the values of our Missoula community. And that is that we treat our neighbors with dignity, with love, with respect, with trust, with all of these intangible ways that we ourselves would want to be treated were we in those shoes. And so, um, and so we do that with an, an army of volunteers. And if, if you are facing hunger, I hope that you'll visit Missoula Food Bank. And if you have some extra time, you can go ahead, come go down and roll up your go down and roll up your sleeves and get involved. Again, thank you, Mr. Brock. Thanks, Mr. Smith. Nice to see you. Welcome to the uh, I Am I Right Now TV uh, um, uh, broadcast, and we want to thank our viewing audience for allowing us to come to your your, your, your to share uh, and uh, to, to invite us into your living rooms. Have a great day, and uh, stay tuned for. Uh, future broadcasts.